All right, I'm trying this with a different device to see if I can make the words more clear. Um, my iPad wasn't very clear, so do let me know if this is better or worse. So we're doing day two, and this time I definitely have it so that it is um, set up the right way so we don't have to turn our head sideways. So we're gonna start with doing some even problems out of the textbook, okay? So we're going to do dy dx of 7x plus 9y equals 23. So don't forget that we are going to make the dy dx stay anytime we take a derivative of y, and it's going to somewhat cancel out, just like it would if you were multiplying. Same idea here, if we were multiplying, um, and they would cross cancel, they would go away anytime you're taking the derivative of x. So I'm gonna take the derivative of all of the terms. So take the derivative of seven x and I get seven. And we took the derivative of x. So I'm going to get seven plus nine. And I took the derivative of y. So I get dy dx this time and the derivative of 23 is just zero and i'm going to solve for dy dx so i'm going to subtract seven and then i'm going to divide by nine so my answer here is just a negative seven ninths. There's no variables involved because it's a very basic implicit differentiation. Okay, so let's do number six. This time we're gonna do dp dq of 50p plus 5pq plus q squared over 10 equals 5,000. Okay, so this time we have that product rule in the middle that you saw a lot of last lesson. Um, so I'm going to put it in the margin again. So F is 5P and Q is, or sorry, G is just Q. Okay, so I'm going to, again, just take the derivative of everything. So the derivative of 50p is 50. And I took the derivative of p. And so I don't need dp, or I do need dp dq, sorry. It's on the top. Then I'm going to do f prime. So I get five. And the q stays because I'm just gonna copy it. And I took the derivative of p so I'm going to put a dp dq. Then I'm gonna do the other part of the product rule and I get 5p times one. And then I need to worry about q squared over 10. This is where some students get stuck. So I'm gonna write over here that q squared over 10 is the same as 1 tenth q squared. So when I take the derivative here, the two is going to come down to over the 10. So I'm gonna get a one fifth Q. So I get plus one fifth Q. Both times here, I took the derivative of Q and it cancels out. So I don't need the DPVQ. Okay, so now I'm going to solve for DPDQ. So I'm gonna subtract this, the last two terms. So I get negative 5p minus 1 fifth q. And I'm going to take dp dq out on the left. And I get 50 plus 5q. And sorry that I'm on different lines, but it's all the same line. And then I'm going to divide. dp dq equals negative 5p minus one fifth q over 50 plus five q. 
Okay. So they all have a term in common, but unfortunately, this one is a one fifth. So I do have a complex fraction here, and I did let you leave that alone before. And I'll show you how to remove it now, but we, I won't make you do it until um, 5 2's lesson. Okay, so we're going to multiply by the one denominator, which is 5. So we're going to multiply by the top by 5 and the bottom by 5. So I'm going to get a negative 25p. The 5 cancels out on the other part, minus q over. 250 plus 25q. I can't cancel everything out because I need to make sure that um, all four have the same thing in common. This term does not, so I can't cancel anything out. I'm just gonna leave it alone now. All right, so we're gonna do one more. That's a little bit easier on number eight. Okay, so number eight is dp dq of 50p squared plus 5pq equals 3,000. Okay, so this one's even easier than the one before. We did the 5pq before. We have one less term, and the first term is a little bit harder, but not really too hard for us. So. We're going to take the derivative of 50p squared and I get 100p. I took the derivative of p, so I'm going to get a dp dq. And then I'm going to take the derivative of 5p and I get 5. The q stays the same. I took the derivative of p, so I need dp dq. I'm going to take 5p and leave it alone. And the q is going to become 1. I don't need dpq dq here because I took the derivative of q. And I get 0 on the right. So this time I only have one term that I'm going to move to the right side. So I get equals negative 5p. On the left, I get dp dq. 100p plus 5q, and I'm going to divide. So I get negative 5p over 100p plus 5q. Now this one, unlike this one up here, <laughs> does have three that are in common. So I need to worry about that. So I'm gonna divide all three pieces by five to get a negative p, over um, 20p plus, uh, sorry, 20p plus q. So that's my final answer here. Okay, so we're gonna move on to number 10, which is one of those Douglas Cobb problems that we had last time. So this is definitely important, pops up over and over again. This time we're going to do dk dl of 2000 equals 7 l to the point 3 k to the point 7. All right. So here we're going to worry about um, point 3s and point 7s. I don't remember what the last lesson had, but they're all decimal exponents. And what I recommend here before we take the implicit differentiation is let's get rid of the seven. So I'm gonna get dk dl of 2000 over seven equals L.3 k.7. And now I'm gonna do implicit differentiation. All right, so I'm going to do Zero equals, I'm gonna bring the point three down. I get L to the negative point seven, K to the point seven. I took the derivative of L, so they cancel out. Plus 
Most of you will do this next. You're gonna leave the 0 0.3 alone, the L. You're gonna bring 0.7 down here and you're gonna subtract, sorry, this is a K, negative 0.3, okay? And this one is where DK DL goes. So what I need to do now is move the term without the DK DL to the other side. So I'm gonna subtract 0.3, L to the negative 0.7, K to the 0.7 equals, everything else stays the same over here, except I'm going to move the 0.7 to the front. 0.7, L 0.3, K negative 0.3, DK DL. And I'm going to divide negative 0.3, L negative 0.7, K 0.7 over, 0.7, L.3, yeah, L.3, K negative 0.3 equals DK DL. And again, a reminder that these two negative pieces are going to make us flip sides. So this one goes here, this one's going to go up. So DK DL. I'm gonna get a negative 0.3, I get a K 0.7, a K positive 0.3 when I move it up, a 0.7, a L 0.3, a positive 0.7 when I move it down. And then I'm going to make the Ks combine. So I get one K here and a, one L right here, and you can leave it like this as your answer, okay? But you can simplify it by multiplying the top and the bottom by 10. So we would get a negative 3K over a 7L, okay? So just wanted to remind you of the couple of the hallmarks of this um, problem. One again is that here you're gonna get a negative 0.7 and a positive 0.7, so they're opposites. And then the other one as well, they're opposites. And then I didn't say this in the other lesson, but here you're gonna get a full K and a full L. So they're both to the first power, okay? But when you get to the quiz or the test, you have to write out all the work. Okay, you can't skip all the in-between work. So you do have to know how to do this entire problem all the way out. Okay. The last problem we're going to work on, and this is the way it is on web work, is they're going to ask you to find DP, DQ, and DQ, DP <coughs> of a function. So this one's 30P plus 3PQ plus Q squared over 100 equals 2000, okay? So choose one of them. I'm normally gonna do the first, the first one written first, TBDQ. And this one isn't any harder than the one we did um in one of the first couple of problems all right so we're gonna do the derivative of 30p is 30 we took the derivative of p so we need dp dq plus if i take the derivative of 3p i'm going to get 3q and i took the derivative of p so i need dp dq and I need to do the other one as well. So take the derivative of Q. I'm left with just 3P in the front. I took the derivative of Q, so I don't need DP DQ. And then Q squared over 100 is just like before. This time it's one over 100 Q squared. So when I bring the two down, I get one over 50 Q or Q over 50. 
equals zero. Okay, this one's a Q as well. So I'm going to subtract 3D, subtract one over 50Q. I'm going to take DPDQ out on the left. So I get 30 plus 3Q. And I'm going to divide. So I get negative 3P minus 1 over 50Q over 30 plus 3Q. And again, if I want to get rid of the 50, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom. So again, I'm getting rid of the denominator on the 1. So I'm going to distribute it to all three parts. Or sorry, all four parts. So I get negative 150p minus q over 1, or sorry, 1500 plus 150q. And again, I can't cancel it because this one term here is a single term. There's no coefficient in front other than negative 1. Okay. So it said also I need to find dq dp. So I need to flip it upside down. And what happens when we find dq dp? Here's what the line reads after I take the implicit differentiation. I end up getting 30 plus 3q plus 3p dq dp plus 150q dq dp equals zero. Mm -hmm. So what happens is I get the terms and they're flipped. So I now have dq dp on the other terms. And when I simplify, I'm going to end up with negative 30 minus 3q on the top and 3p plus 150 over q on the bottom. So things flip and signs flip. So the signs are now on the top. They could be on the bottom as well. It really doesn't matter. Only one set is negative. Um, but it does flip flop sides. So it's the inverse. So we're going to, um, Again, if we're going to simplify, we're going to multiply through by 50. So we end up with negative 1500 minus 150Q over um, 150P plus Q. So pretty standard here. So you do have to be careful when you do these problems because you could do the whole problem correctly, but make it inverse or put terms in the wrong place if you don't have the implicit differentiation in the correct place. So do be careful there, okay? So this one, after we've done this whole set, you should now be able to uh, complete the web work for 5.1.